Today, I'm gonna to talk about the Pulse Boost HD Winterized. Ten point seven six miles for the double today. Ran commuted to work and back home from work today, uh, averaging about nine minutes thirty seconds per mile for the two runs and about one hundred and forty two beats per minute on average for the heart rate. Taking the Adidas Pulse Boost HD winterized for its first run today. Now, before I get to my thoughts on this particular shoe, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that I bought with my own money. No one sent it to me. No one's paying me to make this video or to wear the shoe. And no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of this footage before you guys get to see this video on YouTube. Now, the disclosures out of the way, let's talk about the Pulse Boost HD Winter. Now, this is a shoe from Adidas that I was very interested in when the non-winterized version at least first came out. Uh, and I wasn't sure that I'd get a chance to run in it this year. I mean, there's so many shoes that I always want to get to, but there's only so many miles that I can personally run. And so I didn't think I would get a chance to see it. But when I saw that there was a winter version, I was very excited and I bought one right away. I, I've been waiting until we've had some more inclement weather to try it out. And just unfortunately with the way that kind of my run schedule worked out and the shoes that I wanted to run in first and kind of finish reviewing all that, uh, today's temperatures around freezing, a little bit warmer in the morning when I was running to work. So it was actually the warmest day that we've had in uh, over a week here in Chicago, which was a little bit unusual for us. Uh, in early November, but it was still a good chance to test out at least some of the features of the Pulse Boost HD Winter and the things that make it a winter shoe. Now, the main thing is that it has a different material for the upper. Instead of the knit material that's going on in the regular Pulse Boost HD, this has uh, what uh, Adidas is calling a, a ballistic nylon, and I I'm not sure if it's ballistic caliber nylon, but it is much thicker. Um, and it is uh, definitely gonna be good at keeping water out. I wouldn't call it a waterproof shoe, uh, but just having my feet in there, I can definitely feel that it's warmer than knit for sure. I feel like water is gonna beat up on this quite a bit, so that will help keep water out in terms of repelling water that gets on here. Uh, and it definitely feels like a, a more of a winter shoe material, so very happy with what they've done here. It's not too rigid though, so it's still a very comfortable upper to wear. I think some other weatherized details are there are some reflective elements uh, that are going on around the shoe. They've also got continental rubber on the outsole. I'm not exactly sure if there is any difference in treatment in terms of what's going on the continental rubber outsole on the winterized version versus the regular non-winter version. Uh, both have that continental rubber. It's a very different type of pattern than we're used to seeing in terms of Adidas running shoes, uh, but it's been very good so far for me. Everything felt very sure-footed. Uh, winds were really calm today, so I didn't have a chance to run through any water. Uh, any water that I could have run on was basically just ice right along the waterfront, so I thought that was maybe a little bit too sketchy for even me to run on, so I gave it a pass. Uh, definitely will be putting this through some more torture testing, so stay tuned for that. Now, in terms of the midsole, what's going on here, we've got uh, Boost HD, which is different than regular Boost. And I think that, here's my suspicions. When I first saw Boost HD, I felt like this was either something that's easier for Adidas or Adidas to make, depending on where you live, uh, or it's cheaper for them to make. It's got to be one of those two things, because otherwise, why mix it up? Because it's certainly not a lighter material. It still feels a little bit back heavy in this particular shoe. Uh, there's a lot of this Boost material or Boost HD material in the back. And it still feels like a little bit heavier than it looks like it should based on kind of 
what this shoe looks like. Uh, the, it still feels great, and that's how Adidas touts it. Is it has the same crazy responsiveness? That's a direct quotation as regular Boost, and I would generally agree with that. The other thing that they're touting Boost HD as having a difference for is that it could still have that same crazy responsiveness while also being a little bit more stable of a shoe. Now, something that I've noticed in all the Adidas shoes that I've run in this year, whether it was the Solar Boost, whether it was the Boston 8, or whether it was the Adios 4, is that all those shoes have a torsion bar kind of in the middle. Right here in the center part where the arch of your foot is, there is a piece of rigid plastic, and that's something that just makes it so that way your foot doesn't get too kind of wobbly when you're in the shoe. And I think that that part of the process maybe is expensive for Adidas to do or time consuming, which also translates to expensive. Because then if you think about Adidas's knockdown shoes, like within like the Solar Boost range, there's like Solar Ride and Solar Glide. Uh, as you go down, I don't think there's a torsion bar at all. And so I think that that's where they're trying to test out. Uh, with this shoe. Uh, they've also mentioned in the description of the product that there is some sort of lateral support built into the forefoot. I'm not sure if they mean there's something going on with these colored strips here or just these uh, patches on top that are a little bit stiffer and that's the lateral support that they're talking about. I'm not sure, but I think that's very different from like what a torsion bar or what they call torsion bars would do in the kind of the arch area of the foot. And so uh, as I was putting this shoe on and trying it on, I was kind of testing to see, is there a big difference in that regard? And if that's what the goal was in terms of getting to this Boost HD material is to avoid having to put in those torsion bars in the middle, I don't necessarily think it was successful. Because while overall running in the shoe, I had a lot of fun running in the shoe. I think it's very nimble, it's agile, and just fun to run in. I feel like uh, it's snappy of a shoe. I feel like it does have that boost sensation, that boost quality to it, which is very familiar uh, and also a lot of fun to run in. But I did feel a little bit two main things that I'm going to be keeping a very close eye on as I rack up some of the miles in this shoe is one that I did feel like I was like my foot as it was hitting the ground was kind of moving around quite a bit. Now, here's the thing. On a lot of shoes that are very rigid along kind of uh, like, like this axis of the shoe, a lot of shoes that are very rigid in that regard, I tend to knock them for being too rigid and turning the, the midsole of the shoe into a platform or a plate that doesn't really give. I usually like it when the shoe lets my foot rotate and move in the ways that my foot wants to rotate and move. This lets me do it but a little bit too much. And so, uh, or maybe it's not, but I felt like it was more than what was kind of normal or what I'm used to. And so that's something that I'm gonna keep an eye on. Maybe that's the same feeling as, or related to the other thing that I'm really gonna be watching closely with this shoe is the arch support. Now I'm usually not one that comments on arch support. Uh, I think I have, well, I had my feet measured uh, at Roadrunner Sports one time and I have two different heights in my arches, uh, which I suspect most people do, and I think that's what they told me there. But uh, normally I don't have a strong opinion or even notice one way or the other where a shoe has arch support. A lot of times you guys ask me and I'm just like, I don't know, I didn't notice. This shoe, I noticed that there doesn't seem to be a lot of arch support and maybe it's the fact that there isn't that torsion bar in the middle and my foot is rolling around just a little bit too much or a little bit more than it's, it's used to rolling around and I felt like, like my arch was not collapsing, but I felt a little bit of difference in my arch area uh, because the shoe uh, had me wobbling around just a little bit. Uh, nothing that was uncomfortable or painful today for the two runs that I had in it. And again, it's still early, uh, but something that I am going to be keeping an eye on. So uh, other than that, I feel like the shoe is a lot of fun to run in though, and I'm certainly gonna enjoy beating this shoe up and uh, putting it through its paces. I'm gonna put it through some snow, so I won't be running in it every day from this point out. At this point out, I'm kind of gonna save it for some of the nastier weather that we get here in Chicago, whether it's really cold or just really gross with snow, slush, uh, sleet, ice, that kind of thing. Um, so I'll be using it sporadically and testing it out for those kinds of things. Because here's the thing with winterized shoes and Adidas is doing it, Nike does it all the time and it drives me insane. If in your product videos, and I know it's hard to film in snow, I know it's hard to like schedule a photo shoot that coincides with snow, but in like the product demo videos and the product demo footage, 
if you're just showing wet conditions and the runners aren't wearing gloves or hats or neck warmers or any kind of other winter, if they're still in shorts, it doesn't convince me that you've winterized a shoe. So it's just like, it, I gotta put some more testing to it. I feel confident that this is gonna be a pretty good winter running shoe, uh, but you know what? You gotta put the testing in to see if that's gonna actually be true or not. And stay tuned, I'll definitely be doing that. That's all I have to say about the Adidas Pulse Boost HD Winterized. That's one heck of a name. If you have any more questions about the shoe, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I'd love to talk to you guys more about it down there. Before I go, I wanna talk about the charity runner for today. This week, it's Gavin May. He's gonna be running in the St. Jude's Memphis Marathon weekend, participating in the festivities there uh, and raising money for St. Jude's Hospital. I was very happy to donate $70 to Gavin's fundraising efforts, and I'll post a link in the description in case you'd like to learn more. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?